All right. With that said, let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. For the past five years, we have been working our way through the Psalms. With five books of the Psalms, we have been able to get through the whole book, and we're starting over again for this, our Summer Psalm series. And uh, this is a really great resource because the, the prayer book of the Bible, the hymn book of the Bible, has been there for the church uh, throughout the centuries because it is a resource that gives us insight into so many different subjects from theology to redemption, to our emotions, and uh, to how to face the circumstances that we uh, are faced with every day in our culture. So I'm really excited to be joined today by Lydia Brownback, who's the author of a new book called Sing a New Song, A Women's Guide to the Psalms. So Lydia, thank you so much for being a part of the many voices for that one message. It's a delight to be here today and talk about Psalms, a topic that never gets old, as you say. Mm. Tell us a little bit about uh, this book and what prompted you to write it. Uh, how have the Psalms ministered to you, and why did you want to share that with our, our reader, your readers and our listeners? You know, I, I think I love how the psalmists are so real uh, with God, the, the honesty they express. I mean, and what does that show us about God, that he's open to hearing whatever's on our hearts? And so whether we're downcast or whether we're joyful, uh, whatever the mood is, there's nothing off limits in terms of taking that to God. He welcomes us. And in fact, I think it delights in when we are real with him. The Psalms, more than any other book of the Bible, show how to do that and show that God welcomes and embraces that. So, so it's a great guide um, from their prayers for our own prayers. So I think that's what pulled me into that. But, you know, I, I initially was going to do sort of a, a devotion on each psalm and sort of pull out all these details. And finally, I realized, well, what if I did three or four pages on each psalm? That's 150 psalms. And, and so the publisher said, no way. Uh, so instead, I decided to sort of cut down to a two-page spread for each psalm and a summary of, of where do we see God in here? Where is Jesus in the psalm? And what is the overall theme, the, uh, what, what type of prayer or song is the psalmist putting forth? So it's sort of, as I describe in the, in the opening of the book, it's a launching place to go deeper into a psalm. So if someone's teaching a particular psalm or just deciding to study one in their devotions one morning, sing a new song is meant to say, okay, here's an overview of the psalm. And it, it's a launching off place to go deeper. Yeah, it is interesting. It's not a, a book about the Psalms. It's a book about each Psalm. Um, it's, it's looking into the, the devotional components, but also providing a lot of really great helps. Um, 150 Psalms, that's a lot to tackle. And uh, this must have taken you some time to kind of put together. Uh, it did. It took a lot of time. It took more time than I thought it would when I started out, just because I did have sort of a devotional thing in mind. But then when you get to the imprecatory Psalms, where, where they're, they're calling down condemnation on their enemies and asking God to destroy them. You know, initially, what do you do with that? And so it, it took some research and a lot of prayer and a lot of learning from those who have, whom God has raised up and equipped to teach us this material. So to understand it. So that, that was a huge help. Uh, but it, it, it did become, I mean, it was a daunting task once I got into it because it's not this simple, uh, easy to understand, God help me today kind of thing. There's a lot of real theological depth in the Psalms as well. The Psalms have, have served as a prayer book for the church, um, a song book, a hymn book for believers. And, and yet there is a, a kind of wide diversity. You've already mentioned this. You've already kind of brought up the fact that some songs are a lot easier to sing than others in yeah. the Psalms. Right. Why is that? Why is there such diversity? And how do we kind of relate to that as we're working through it? Yeah, I love that God did it that way. You know, these, these songs, these prayers uh, collected over a period of time, written by different people, individuals, sung by groups um, at, at different seasons in the life of, of ancient Israel. And when they're gathered together, they were primarily compiled to sing as, like, as the church's hymn book, as you mentioned early on. And so, so when they would gather, when God's people would gather for corporate worship, they would, they would use the Psalms in that context. At the same time, 
many of them, um, if not most, were sort of composed as individual prayer songs. So, but they were then sung corporately by the gathered body. And so, so they can be used by us in either way. So as a church, it's wonderful. I mean, many churches do a psalm reading every Sunday, uh, a great practice. Many of us read a psalm at the end of every day as an individual, so that's good too. So there's really no limit on how they're meant to be used. I think that it's the sky's the limit. Um, it, it, you know, it, so, and the range of, of individuals who, co who compose the Psalms shows God's unique gifting of individuals and how he lays on different hearts, different things to communicate about him and to him. And, and therefore it does help us to say, well, you know, I may not be like my pastor or like this godly person over here who I look up to so much. I'm me and that's okay because I can be different and I can go to God the same way the psalmist did. So it does, it, it helps, it, it gives us access. That diversity you mentioned gives us access to God. It kind of opens up the access he's given us, I should say. Uh, one of the things that I love so much about the Psalms is the way in which it uh, kind of, it takes root in our hearts. You know, you read a Psalm, obviously, you know, Psalm 23 is one that's so widely known and remembered and recited. Uh, but uh, when you're reading through the Psalms, they, they really do take root. They latch on to us. And, and we need those Psalms, especially as we're going through trials, tribulations, as, as we're facing uh, pandemics, right? We need yeah. those Psalms. We need those, uh, those anchors to hold to in times of crisis. Well, especially in book one of the Psalter, as you're talking about, there's so many comforting Psalms there. And I think about how David, King David, especially would pour out his fears. He wasn't, he wasn't embarrassed to pray those fears, to, to lift them to God and to, and to ask for help. And to acknowledge the reality of saying, yes, I have faith in you, but I'm still afraid. And, and what, what, do, what do we do with that? We learn from him. And then I think about Psalm 27, where at the end of it, David says, I would have lost hope unless I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And that, that was a Hebrew idiom for that land of the living for our lifetime. So what does that do? It gives us hope to say we can look for what God's going to do in our lifetime, not just for the afterlife. We have hope for now too. So, so there's, there's so much hope producing in the Psalms. And, and I do think that first book of the Psalter, we do see that the Lord is our shepherd. We see a lot about fear and uh, clinging to the Lord in times of fear and, and, and when life seems to be crumbling all around us. You know, and, and right down to little basic day-to-day -day things like uh, I, I'm an insomniac. I, I struggle with sleep. So there's so many things in the Psalms about uh, sleep. And you think even, you know, talking about God is the one who gives us sleep. And when I'm awake in the watches of the night, your comforts delight my soul. And, and I think Psalms are a great book for insomniacs. Memorize a few of those, even pinpoint some of the Psalms that address sleep, and then say them over and over on the nights when you're lying awake. I mean, there's just, uh, there's just, it's 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 a comforting it's the most comforting tool we have at our disposal to turn to god and find the help we need in in these day in day out struggles that we all face yeah i forget who said it uh, we just actually had it on the radio but uh, uh someone who said that you should read uh or re recite psalm 23 every night seven times before bed and uh it will bring a lot of peace and comfort into your life. The, there's something rich about it. And, and there's, there's a lot of songs that we sing and, and with the repetition, I think is really important because the reciting of it, the repeating it, the remembering those songs, as well as the hymns that we sing in our worship on, on Sunday, those give us a lot to hold to as, you know, we don't even realize how much we need them until that time of crisis when, when all of a sudden, we're desperate and we have our arms are kind of reaching out and when the psalms are there deep in our soul they give us a lot of comfort oh so much when you mentioned psalm 23 that's one that i memorized early on and when i'm awake at night and can't sleep it's amazing how often when my when my wakefulness is a spiritual issue when i start reciting psalm 23 i'm asleep i fall asleep and it's it's just it's incredible so you talk about how, like even going over the words and the lines, the Lord is my shepherd, and then say the Lord is my shepherd. 
the Lord is my shepherd. And each time emphasize a different word and ponder what that means. Um, I shall not lack. I shall not want. I shall not lack. Uh, and then he makes me lie down in green pastures. And I like that he makes us. Um, so in other words, he governs our lives with his overruling providences. And I love where it says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And when I think about when I'm lying awake or struggling or stressed because of some sin I've done, and I'm, in, I'm in trouble because of a mess I've made of my own life. I love how the goodness and mercy follows me. In other words, it comes behind me and cleans up my mess. And so when we really, when we ponder the exact wording of these Psalms, there's, it, again, another inexhaustible resource for understanding how God works in our lives. Mm. Now, we're good friends of uh, Dr. Donald Whitney. And I'm sure you know who that is. And uh, oh, yeah. he's written the book, Praying the Bible. And he's uh, actually been out here at one of our uh, conferences and talked to us about how to pray the Bible, especially using the Psalms and how mm -hmm. to pray through the Psalms. It certainly is a great prayer book and it can really help us in that process. But mm -hmm. uh, you've approached it as a devotional, which I think is a, a, a very special way to approach it. Uh, why is that significant and, and how is that uh, approaching it as a way of meditation is, is valued to the reader and our listeners? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of ways to go about that, that I think it, it is that pondering. When I say devotional, I mean, it's, it's that pondering of what the words say. And then it's not just individual words, but it's looking at a psalm in its whole context. So who wrote the psalm? What was, if, if, are we given to know the backstory of why he wrote the psalm? Was he going through a hard time, a scary time? Was he feeling guilty because of sin? Was he suffering for his sin? Or was he rejoicing because God had given a great blessing? So, so once we know that, then we can get into the details of the psalm. And really, what does it teach us about the character of God? How does it point to Jesus Christ? These are, these are the devotional aspects of it that, that we can do as individuals as well as pray it. Um, you know, I make a couple of suggestions. One of the things I, I, I've suggested in the book is um, journaling our way through the Psalms. And if we're going through uh, a season of, of, of anxiety or fear, sit down and, and sort of note the emotions in the Psalm. And people can get very suspicious of this kind of thing, but if, if, this is, if the emotions are put out there in the Psalms, there's nothing off limits about exploring that. That's, that's acknowledging how God made us. And this book is our invitation to, to acknowledge our emotions. Um, we, we don't want to be suspicious of that. You know, I mean, obviously our, our walk with God is, is, is our head. It's also our heart. And it's, it's, it's all, it all goes together. Here's our invitation. So let's maybe journal our way through and say, what emotions is the psalmist expressing here? What's coming out? And then as we're, we're reading it through and to say, hmm, you know, he's expressing he's anxious today. Uh, he's, he's feeling a lot of weight. He feels God's distant from him because he knows he's, his conscience is troubling him for some sin. And he's, he's heavy hearted today about that. Um, or he's, he's upset with someone. He's angry at injustice. And how is he praying about that? How's he feeling about it and then praying about it? So as, as we take an honest look at the emotions expressed in the Psalms, we can kind of say, well, you know, they're, they're on the same way. We're all human. We're all the same way. God welcomes that. I don't have to clean myself up to go to God. I, but let's look at how the Psalmist presented it. When they're upset and frustrated, they're, they're still in awe of God. They still show reverence and, and, and humility before him. And that's another thing too, when you, we can have an honest expression of our emotions, the psalmist show us, but we, we, and we are invited to pour them out to the Lord, but it's never, it's never with um, dishonor or disrespect for our great God. So we do learn how to appropriately in a godly way, uh, go to God with this raw honesty with how we feel. I, I think that's really important um, because the Psalms give us a wide range of emotions, a wide range of kind of responses, everything from imprecatory to, um, to praise and everything in between. But they're also teaching us how we ought to pray, how we ought to approach God. If we have a problem, we bring it to him. And that kind of uh, attends to the fact that we need to not just 
cherry pick. And that's what I love about your book. You didn't just cherry pick a few Psalms. You go through each and every one of them because we need to have the whole book of the Psalms in our heart, not just the ones that, that we like but in particular, like yeah. Psalm 23. We need more than that, don't we? Exactly. And I think that's where you mentioned the imprecatory Psalms. When we hit those and we see, we see David, he's crying out, bring down the enemy, destroy the enemy. Well, how do, how do we apply that? How do we pray that psalm and that kind of psalm? And I think today, you know, we live in a very different society. We don't live in a theocracy where, you know, we need to, to wipe out people who, who dislike God, who despise God. Instead, you know, we conquer them with the gospel, right? So, so that's it. We, we hate sin. We want to conquer that. We want to conquer it with the gospel. So we pray that, that God brings down the sin in our enemies uh, and, and captures them with the gospel. And so that's, that's how I've suggested uh, we apply the imprecatory Psalms. Um, let's conquer with the gospel today. And then at the same time, praying against injustice praying that God would stop injustice. And, and uh, you know, there's, a, I think, a time and a place to say, Lord, stop this, this horrible, horrendous evil one way or another. It's praying for God's justice. And, uh, but in a way that it's about conquering with, with the gospel, with salvation in Christ. It's, it's about praying for the destruction of sin and evil, not for individuals. And I think that's, is, we can apply all the Psalms today um, if we understand them through that lens. So, uh, but yeah, we can't skip them. It, it, it takes some work to figure out how to pray certain types of Psalms. And you think we have what Psalm 88, late, a little later on in the Psalter, that, that doesn't end on a, on a happy, cheerful note. But what does that teach us? It teaches us that, again, we don't have to clean up and, and say all the right words when we go to God and end on this high note every time, any more than we do in the rest of our relationships. The more real any of our relationships with people are, the, 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 we're just who we are on a given day. And we do it with love and respect and, and gentleness, but we're real. And the Psalms show us that that's what God values with us. He doesn't want pretty spiritual people. He wants real relationships with us. Um, I love how you've structured each daily devotional, uh, each Psalm devotional, because You've given a, a lot of clarity, kind of overview, but you've also kind of brought in some key insights to each psalm that are, I think, essential, uh, as well as bringing it to a place of application. Uh, tell us a little bit about the structure and how you broke down each psalm. Okay, well, so I'll pull the book open here. So the first, in the, for each psalm, there's sort of a one sentence overview of theme of the psalm. And then... It, 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 I would give the author of the psalm and sort of what, the circum, what his backstory was, um, the situation. And then sort of go, working through verse by verse, a little bit sort of training us through, trailing through the psalm to, uh, from beginning to end, sort of get the, the gist of it and a little commentary there. And then um, at the end, I'm sorry, it's been so long since I looked at this. Um, so then just sort of bringing out some application of, of what, where we see God and what, what, how to apply it. Like basically, um, God's, God's disposition toward us, it's evident in the psalm, um, and how often the psalmists start at a place of distress and how they end at a place of joy. We see this through so many psalms, and I think the main thing we want to pull out from that is that as we focus on God, as we worship him, as we pray, we are transformed. We're, we're looking at him and our perspective changes, and you watch how many psalms we go through that start uh, on a downcast note and end on a high note. Most of them do. And the whole point is that they're focused on the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what we want to take each, as we go through, as we trace through each Psalm, we watch how the Psalmist gets there. And I try to bring out what in the Psalm specifically that he's remembering about God, that he's praying, that he's asking for, that he's remembering this. Those are the things that change his perspective. 
and, and reminds him of who God is, his father and friend and strong character. And, 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 and so I list some the attributes of God that show up in each psalm. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, at the end, I want to try to uh, connect the psalm to other places in scripture. The th we were just tracing the thread of redemptive history all through the Bible, and each psalm can, can link somewhere else in scripture that shows us Jesus, that shows us the big picture of, of the storyline of the Bible and of, of, of what God's doing in the world. So try to trace those things. It's sort of an overview in each psalm, but primarily to say, who is God in this and why do we have hope? Why can we have hope? And why can, how do we pray this and understand him through this psalm? That's mm -hmm. the, we want to do. And we can with every single one. I, I, I mentioned, um, you mentioned actually the superscriptions and the kind of context for each psalm. I think that's really unique. And I love that in the psalms and how they are laid out uh, to give us some insight into the author. Um, yeah. Also, sometimes insight into the circumstances that the author was experiencing when he was writing the psalm. Um, David in particular, I think it was Stuart Briscoe who wrote a, a book on the psalms of David. And, and years ago, I, I did a study where I stopped and I looked up, I cross-referenced whenever there was a superscription that kind of gave the context of what uh, David was going through. And reading the story that goes along with the psalm that yeah. uh, he's writing gives a lot more body to it. I think that that's what's so unique about the psalms is that there's a history to it. There's more to be explored that gives greater meaning, greater significance, also a greater personal relationship with the psalm, doesn't it? Yes, very much so, I, especially with David, as you mentioned. Uh, it, it, we know we have his life um, that, that reads like, you know, a dramatic uh, movie, television made for TV movie with the way his life was. And he's, he's so, so real about his shortcomings, his failings, his sins, uh, and also his grief. And so sometimes, in the, and his fears. So we do have in, in the stories up there in the superscription about what's going on in his life at a given time. And he'll tell us a Psalm of David when I was hiding, when he was hiding in the cave um, from Saul, or when he was in, uh, fleeing from Absalom, his son, when his own son was out to kill him. And when we understand that backstory, we can see there, the pathos in his heart, the cries of his heart. And we can imagine, well, maybe, hopefully, it's hard to put ourselves in his shoes to imagine what you'd feel like if your own child were trying to kill you. And yet he's dealing with this and, um, and, and then pouring that out to God. So no matter our situation, that can be equally as painful, whatever our own plight might be, to be able to say, I, God wants me to pray in the same way. I can cry out for the same help. And what can I remember about God? Look how David went from this place of fear and grief to this place of hope, even though his circumstances hadn't changed. And I think that's one of the key things about Psalms. This isn't a book about how life changes. Uh, this, you know, from the beginning to the end of the Psalm, nothing changes. And it's, it's a, but someone's, perspective in their heart change in the same circumstances that have it. That's what's so amazing about this book. So it's, it's, what do we learn? We learn that it's where we fix our gaze. It's, it's where we set our affections. It's, it's where we place our trust and our hope. And, and those things are transformed as we pray and fixate and Psalms show us this. As we see that David starts out, I'm terrified to where I will praise you. You're going to deliver me, but he hasn't yet delivered him. What happens? It's all in his head and his heart through lifting himself up to the Lord and the spirits at work in him with showing him who God is. So that's for us, no matter what we're dealing with. It's amazing. It's, it's just, it's such a gift from God, the Psalms. Now, you've written this book uh, covering every psalm. You've put your heart and your soul into this book, and I'm sure that you benefited the most from it in all reality because uh, you spent all that extra time working through each psalm to write these devotionals. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway, and, and what do you cling to in, in your own time of, of trouble when you go to the psalms? I think it's that, that, that I can, when I pray, I don't, have to get myself in this cleaned up spiritual place 
I don't have to, uh, you know, have made sure, you know, people talk about acronyms for prayer. And I think about that one that ACTS is called ACTS, ACTS, um, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, Supplication. And they sit down and they, and that can help some people. Sure, that can help some people. And yet it can also become this formula where you're afraid, oh, you know, I have to adore and then I have to thank before I can supplicate. And I, I don't, I don't love that. And we, I think the Psalms help us see that it doesn't have to be formulaic, nor sh actually, nor should it be. Um, we do have the Lord's Prayer in the New Testament, but Jesus wasn't saying, be sure to pray in this particular order, and you, know, you have to do it this way. He's basically saying, here's how you talk to God. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, yes, there is that God first in Jesus prayer. You know, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. That That's premier in everything. And if you don't, in the Psalms, if, even if it's not said, it's implied all through the Psalm. So, so, but that aside, I think one of the things we see in Psalms is that we don't have to say, well, before I ask God to bless this situation, have I confessed all my sin? Have I gotten that all right? And the Psalms help us see that we're just free to be relational with God in the same way we are with our, with our loved ones. You know, that's what he's after. And I think part of why he gave us the Psalms was to say, please be real with me. That's, I'm after your heart. Hmm. That's what I took away from it. Yeah, I think that's one of those resounding truths is the honesty of the Psalms and how uh, the psalmists are relating to God. They're bringing their problems. I think it's Timothy Keller who said, uh, it's okay to complain as long as you're complaining to the right person. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you're going to your friends to complain, that's probably not very healthy. But if you're going to God, uh, like Job or like many of the psalmists, uh, he hears our cries and he sympathizes with us in our weakness. Um, yeah. I think it's a valuable way to see the Psalms as a resource to teach us how to pray and how to worship as we, we come before God with our, our hearts on our sleeve. Very much so. You know, I think about later in the Psalter, we have Psalm 51, where David's confessing, he's, he's pouring out his sin. We learn so much there about how to repent and, and pray to God about our, and, and to take our sin to him with raw honesty and what repentance looks like. It's revealed in David's prayer. And uh, so that's very instructional as well as, as, as helping our hearts to, to go to God unashamed and unafraid in Christ. Um, and then we have Psalm 119, which is such a beautiful, um, uh, long, longest chapter in the Bible, right? This beautiful acrostic of, of, about God's word. But one of the things we find in that Psalm, I think, is how many reference there are, references there are to the psalmist saying that he has this wholehearted devotion, wholehearted pursuit, wholehearted love. Let me love you with my whole heart. And if you trace through that Psalm and look for the expression wholeheart or wholeheartedness, you see what is there. It's, it's this, this overwhelming life dominating passion for the Lord and how that is, that is meant, that is where peace and joy are found. And you, and it just wells up when you see how, how the Psalmist takes us through that. And it's, the, each one just has this unique um, emphasis, a different facet on, on approaching God um, and on the character of God. And so we do find, again, that, that we cannot just say, okay, well, let me read two or three Psalms and, and you know, now I know the Psalter. You know, there, we, we learn about God, something different in each and every one. Mm. I think it's important for people to read through the whole book of the Psalms and to do so intentionally. Um, not just it, whether you're praying through the Psalms like we, we've heard from Don Whitney or using the devotional that goes through each one, uh, one per day, you know, for three months. That's great. Uh, mm -hmm. well, actually, be more than three months, wouldn't it? Um, how many days are there in a month? 50, is that right? Um, <laughs> 30, right. Well, right. yeah. <laughs> but if you work through the Psalms and you really get through the whole, the whole book um, and you're walking away with a greater understanding, you're, you're really going to be opened up to opportunities to, to really approach God and, and not be afraid to approach God with everything that you're facing in your life. It really is an invitation to bring all of our needs, all of our concerns to the throne of grace and know that he hears us, he loves us, he cares for us, and he can sympathize with us in those ways. Yes, his, the Psalter is an invitation from God to his people 
to come to him as we are and to pour out our hearts and our lives and to rest in him. That is the purpose, that's the overarching purpose. And in that process, we praise and worship him and bring him glory. Amen. Well, we've been talking with uh, Lydia Brownback about her book called Sing a New Song, A Woman's Guide to the Psalms. And it's a great resource. If you want to find out more information, of course, you can give us a call. But before we get into that, uh, Lydia, could I ask for you to, to pray for us and our, our listeners and your readers that the Psalms would become more real to them, um, more deeply understood so that it would be the, the rock and the, the kind of anchor that they can hold to in the midst of of trying times. Yes, absolutely. Father, our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this amazing book of the Bible that you have given us to know you, to approach you, to come to you. We thank you that this book is an invitation from you to us for a deeper relationship. And we ask, Lord, for the help of your spirit as we read the Psalms, as we pray the Psalms, as we dive into the Psalms, that you would lay on our hearts an openness to come to you, to see ourselves in them, and to bring what we see before you, to spread it out for your work, for your training of our hearts, that we would love you more and worship you more and see you more clearly as we, as we pray, as we read, as we delve into this incredible portion of your word. So we ask, Lord, that as we read the Psalms this summer, um, the rest of this year, that we would, each time, we would love you more after we do than, than we started. And so deepen our love for you through this amazing book of the Bible as we come to see who you are and comfort our hearts. Show us that you are everything you say you are in the Psalms. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We've been talking, as I said, with uh, Lydia Brownback about her book called Sing a New Song, A Woman's Guide to the Psalms. It's a great resource that looks at each and every psalm, all 150, and gives devotionals as well as some insights that will help you uh, to make the psalms more meaningful and more personal in your prayer life and your worship. To find out more information, you can give us a call. It's 508-362-7070, or you can send us uh, an email at info at songtime.com and check out our website. Again, there's songtime.com. Uh, Lydia, thank you so much for being a part of the many voices for that one message, sharing this book with us, uh, but also sharing your own passion with uh, understanding the Psalms and, and being a part of this series as we look at the Psalms this summer. Well, it's been an honor to be here with you today. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thanks.